So I think we're uh, I think we're streaming live now. So um, good morning to everybody. Um, and a warm welcome to the service on this beautiful sunny second Sunday of Lent. It's lovely to have so many people here this morning. Um, for those who are with us in uh, live on Zoom and Facebook, but also for those of you who are joining us on YouTube later, welcome to all of you. And I hope you're all keeping well. So we're going to start our service this morning um, and we'll start with, um, with a lovely hymn. We've got three lovely hymns this morning. I hope you're all in good voice and uh, I'm ready to, uh, ready to sing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. 
the sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. We say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today, the second Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings, and by following in his way, come to share in his glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we're going to sing our gradual hymn, Just As I Am, Without One Plea. <clears throat>
will read the gospel for us. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Your lamp, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life. Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's been a chilly but gorgeous sunny week, and spring is coming, and we have everything to look forward to. This past week, we've been given a number of milestones to release us from the burden of a COVID lockdown. Schools are reopening, sports begin again, people can start to meet in groups and businesses can restart again. Holidays are also being booked. We certainly have a lot of things to look forward to and many people are starting to feel really positive. And why not? I think it is good to be positive and upbeat. It encourages good well-being, even a smile. Sometimes we don't focus enough on a positive future, especially as we look back on the rocky road of the last 12 months. In our gospel this morning, Jesus foretells his death and his resurrection. He speaks very clearly about his coming journey. The religious leaders will set aside all of the evidence and have him killed. But emerging from that darkness, he will rise again after three days. Peter takes him aside and tries to censure Jesus, likely suggesting that even if he knows it is going to happen, he should not wait to be caught, but escape and carry on his ministry. Peter did not seem to hear after three days rise again. He is thinking what any normal man would, what he would do. If you know it's going to happen, run and avoid it. Peter thinks Jesus should be thinking like him, even attempting to persuade Jesus to change his mind. But Jesus doesn't let him finish. Instead, he challenges Peter and the disciples, get behind me, Satan. Jesus does not drive Satan away. He demands that control be taken of these ideas that are at the forefront of Peter's mind and put them in their rightful place. Now, I would challenge anyone to read the Passion of Christ. And as Jesus nears arrest or is on trial, to not at some point instinctively think, why do you stay silent? Argue your case. You could escape this pain. But that is my mind on a human response. 
and not a divine response. I am separating the crucifixion from the resurrection, just as Peter did. Like Peter, I think of my own personal comfort and safety. I have pride, and I can be led to grasp at worldly things like wealth and prosperity and self-preservation, sometimes at the cost or control of others. If we allow those thoughts and values to drive us, as they did Peter, they lead us away from the path that Jesus is walking. They represent that Satan that Jesus said needs to be behind us and not in front of us, shaping our priorities. So Jesus wanted the disciples to no longer think like men, but think like Jesus does. To have a mind like Jesus means to restructure and reorder all of our priorities. It means denying instinctive human desire and be led by God's will. That's a world in which Jesus is king and God's rules apply, not the rules of this world. It's a place where houses, cars, clothes, and the things we surround ourselves with are just stuff that occupy space. They don't carry any long-term value as they fade away. We need things to live, and we have to look after ourselves. But with spring coming, I think we are all now realizing that being back outside in the sun, mixing with friends and family and strangers, that's real wealth, and it makes us feel good. Put those relationships in front of us to guide us and keep those other things behind us. Otherwise, they become a stumbling block, an anchor that holds us in one place. How good does it feel to meet up with family or just being amongst them? Focus on that and value it. Churches are soon carefully opening again, and our congregation will start chatting and catching up. Focus on that and welcome it. The things that can divert us and weigh us down need to be picked up and carried to the foot of that cross or they'll keep us forever where we are not just our love of material wealth but guilt shame jealousy our sins in jesus resurrection in our baptism we were forgiven all these things and our faith in christ lifts the burden that we are asked to carry we should understand the pain of Jesus' journey and his sacrifice, but also appreciate what release it brings after three days. Focus on Jesus' rise from death to life. Solemn in his arrest and trial and death, but in his resurrection, look ahead with as much joy and, and excitement as we do the transformation from winter to spring, from dark to light, and from lockdown to eventual release. Amen. Thank you, Vaughan, for those words. We say together the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. <clears throat> we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, Anna, you will lead us in our intercessions. Let us pray to our God in faith, knowing that he understands what is best for us. Heavenly Father, increase our faith that everyone in your church may be more ready to trust you and move forward with you wherever you lead us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give to all leaders and their advisors the courage to be honest, the will to be just, the greatness to be humble, and the openness to learn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, at the door of each home, place your welcome. In the rooms of each home, your love. In the eyes of each person, your truth. And in all our companionship, your own. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give comfort and, he and healing to those who are ill, peace to the anxious and reassurance to the afraid. May we know your love for us through both the good and the agonizing times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, may, be, may the dying be prepared to meet you. Remembering at this time, David, David Nicklin, who taught so many of our children. And may the souls of all of those who have died in faith live forever in the joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, Give us, your, give us thankful hearts to bless your name in sadness and in joy, knowing that you are always there beside us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thanks. Let us offer one another a sign of peace with a wave and a smile. God of wisdom, may the light of your eternal word, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, lead us in holiness and guide us to glory. We ask this in his name. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will come, become for us 
the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Come to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. And now we give you thanks, because each year you give us this joyful season when we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and heart renewed. You give us a spirit of loving reverence for you and of willing service to our neighbor. As we recall the saving acts that give new life in Christ, you bring the image of your son to perfection within our Confident that your promise will be fulfilled we now watch for that day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the high. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with Michael and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, a loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ keep you in it life. Amen. Almighty God, you see that we have no power of ourselves ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls that we may be defended from all which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we say, we thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament with Christ and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. From the church um, about reopening the church building um, as, uh, as we were thinking about earlier um, the, an emergency parochial church council meeting took place on Tuesday last week and uh, they've decided at that meeting that the building will be reopened on Sunday 21st of March. The 1015 Holy Communion service will take place inside the building and weekly service inside the building at 10.15. Of course, there will be some restrictions and the, uh, the COVID uh, regulations will have to be followed, but the church service will be um, starting again on that date. Uh, the weekly online services starting at 11.30, like this one, will continue each week until further notice. Coffee mornings, always a welcome sign at 11 o'clock on the first and third Sunday, Saturdays of each month. So 
So the next one is on Saturday, the 6th of March. Um, that's when Reverend Fiona will be talking about her work at the Christie Hospital, uh, which should be a very interesting um, meeting for us. Um, very good work that goes on at Christie, and I know that, uh, that Fiona is very heavily involved there. Uh, Zoom details are via the subscription only email newsletter. So you are encouraged to subscribe if you want to take part in these um, Zoom, meeting, Zoom uh, meetings. I think there's a video to watch now. Our church's ministry and mission has never been more needed. Meeting online or in church for prayer services and fellowship, loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity and we are so grateful for all the gifts we receive. This generosity is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. If you are able to give to us now, here's how you can help. <clears throat> that little video has just reminded me that um, Paul has notified us of a, a, a new job that he's got at the diocese uh, in relation to giving. Uh, so many congratulations, Paul. Um, that's, uh, that's very good news for you and, uh, and for all of us too. So well done. And now we're going to sing our closing hymn, which is another one that we can really get our voices um, active on, At the Name of Jesus. So as we come to the end of our service, go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.